All right, this is Devin's dog sitting essential guide to starting a pet care business. If you're new here, I'm Devin. I own Devin's Dog Sitting, which is a professional pet care company in Dover, New Hampshire. And this is a list of the 10 essential things that you need to start a successful pet care company. I've really taken everything I've learned in my first full year of business and what I've learned so far in the second year, and I've composed a list of the 10 most essential things that you need to have in place to have a successful business. These are things that will make you stand out from the hobby sitters in your area, from the rover of sitters, from the wag walkers. These are the things that will really help you shine as a business. So whether you're just starting your business, whether you're looking to go full time, or whether you're just curious about what it takes, keep watching. This list goes beyond the basics of having a phone, having a reliable mode of transportation, unless all of your clients live in the same neighborhood, which is uh, the dream. It goes beyond having good sneakers, and it doesn't get into things like getting your accountant, steps that are like one step beyond starting. This is the list of things you need to do to start and start off on the right foot. You cannot skip any of these steps. Truly, if you skip any of these steps, you are doing yourself a disservice. And I might've even missed some things. If I missed something, please put it in the comments below and let me know what I missed. The first and most important thing you need, and I cannot stress this enough, you need to have a passion for the pets that it's plain and simple. You need to have a passion for the pets. You need to care deeply about the welfare, the comfort, and the happiness of the cats, dogs, rabbits, mice, everything that you watch. You need to have the passion because there are 30 other pet care companies in my town that I could tell you about. They all have the passion. You know, if you start off and you don't have a passion for it, if you're just doing it because it seems easy or if it's just something that you're like, oh, I could do it, whatever. I went to business school, I can make a business. You're missing that vital, vital step that makes you stand out as a pet sitter. If you don't have the passion, you won't compare. The second step is choosing a name and a logo. Mine came... Excuse me, can you have an emergency somewhere else? This is gonna bug me continuity wise. My client gave me this cup this week. How cute is that? And I don't wanna hear anything about my hair. I tried so long to curl this side. Ugh. I don't wanna hear anything about it. It is what it is. Oh my God. Okay, I think we're good. The second step is choosing a name. You need a name or else how are people gonna know how to hire you? <laughs> my name came from when I was making an Instagram account to share my dog sitting adventures on Rover when I lived in New York. I was sitting with one of my favorite dogs of all time, Tucker, and we were sitting on the couch and I was like, hmm, what do I call my Instagram? Uh, Devin's dog sitting and it stuck. I kind of love it. It flows off the tongue. I've considered changing it now that I do not do overnights anymore. But my mom made a very good point that babysitting doesn't mean you sleep over with the baby. So dog sitting is similar. You need a name. A lot of people suggest that you have your name or the town you're in as part of your name. I have seen a lot of people use puns and play on words and name things after their own pets. It's whatever you like and what feels good to you. Once you have a name, having a logo helps. That's how you can brand yourself. You need to start branding, especially if this is something that you're going to take full time or you're expecting to continue with for a long time. Having a brand is important and your brand is your name, your logo, and who you are. Come up with your name, come up with your logo. My logo, actually, it's right here. I just love the minimalistic outline of the dog ears. These are Gemma's ears. I embroidered this. I believe first I did the drawing and then embroidered it here, but I took the drawing that I had done and I took it to Canva where I then used their logo feature and played around with it a bit until I got the logo that I have now. And I love my logo. I get compliments on it all the time and it took me five minutes to make. It's so easy. But if you're not feeling up to making your own logo, there are tons of places you can go online to have your logo commissioned and you can work with an artist to make your logo for you. Number three, we're gonna jump right into legal 
crap. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it feels like legal crap when you do it. It is so confusing and overwhelming. I highly recommend working with a lawyer who can look over your contracts, everything. Have a lawyer who you can use as a resource. The third step, you really should form an LLC or any other sort of business structure that you'd like, but an LLC is a limited liability company and what the LLC does is it separates your money as the owner of the business from the business's money. So if you were ever to come up against a lawsuit or any debts that you owe on your business, having an LLC keeps your personal money separated from the business. While you're forming your LLC, you should also have a registered agent. This is the person who represents your company, who responds to government and tax correspondence on behalf of your company. They are the person who essentially makes sure all of the stuff that you don't understand is kosher. I have one through the state of New Hampshire. It was on the website as I was signing up for my LLC. It's another $49 a year. You can be your own registered agent. I am still in the stage of my life where I'm moving all the time. I did not feel like keeping up with the address changes. On top of the fact that I have no idea what any of the legal stuff means, I did not want any of that to fall on me. Having a registered agent who's not myself allows me to feel a lot more confident that things are going to be set up correctly and responded to on time. It makes my life so much easier. And it's one more thing that I don't have to think about. While you're getting all of the legal stuff done, you need an EIN. This is your employer identification number. You need an EIN to file your taxes, to open a bank account, to hire employees. It's essential, you need it. You, you should have, if you are setting up a business that you want to be sustainable and to have for a very long time, you need an EIN, so just get one. My camera's dying, no! One eternity later. I'm not even gonna pretend that there hasn't been a full hour <laughs> between then and now. Oops, rookie move, my camera battery died. But you know what I did in the meantime? I tried to fix my hair, which still don't wanna hear anything about it. And I ordered two more batteries <laughs> because damn, that sucked. Another thing I wanted to mention, check with your state. You might need a license for pet care. They have dog walking licenses, pet boarding licenses. I believe New Hampshire has a license for a kennel if you're establishing a kennel and for boarding but I know that there is not a license required for pet care or overnights. Make sure you're up to date with your state's individual rules and regulations. Honestly there was such a gap in time. I think we're on number four. If you are anticipating growing quickly or if you know that this is what you want to do, this is going to be your established business, get a software. I cannot stress enough how important and life-changing a software is. I, as a hobby sitter, was using Rover, so that's where my communication was, the invoicing, everything. Rover kind of handled it for me. When I left Rover, it became all up to me to track everything. Appointments, invoicing, payments, schedule, messaging, everything. It got to be very overwhelming, especially as I was adding more weekly walks, more meet and greets every week. It just became super overwhelming. Luckily, I had heard about Pet Pocketbook, which is is my preferred software. Oh, I could go on and on. I'm gonna do, I'll probably do another video about Pet Pocketbook because they, they have my heart. But having a software helps save you from having to track everything manually, follow up on invoicing and fees. It's all set up, it's all there for you. It's super easy for your clients. Streamline, they go in, they request you. You go in, you approve it, you deny it. It's all right there. I cannot stress you how important it is to get a software. It will change your life. I personally want to be buried with pet pocketbook I'm not quite sure how that's gonna happen but honestly that's not my problem number five insurance I know I keep saying this about every single step that I'm saying but this will make you stand out I personally use pet Surgers associates hit me up for a sponsorship they make it super easy it's a really buildable package you can add whatever you need you can add employees onto your accounts you can also include if you're taking dogs into your home or if you don't do that you don't need to add it and then you don't pay for it highly highly recommend pet Surgers associates but there are lots of options out there number six Organize your money. This is not a necessity, but this will set you up for success. That's my sink. Once you have your EIN, open a separate bank account. Especially if you're an LLC, 
Having your money separate from your company's money just helps support you even more. It's not necessary, but it's really, really advised that you keep your money separate. I personally use Bluevine, which is an online bank, and because they don't have the overhead of a physical building or anything like that, your interest rate is a lot higher. I actually make a good amount of interest off of the money that I keep in my Bluevine account. A bonus step here is opening a business credit card. That way, all the purchases you need to make, all the subscription purchases, you put everything on that business credit card. Again, it keeps your money separate from your business's money, and it is so important, and you will be very grateful for it in the long run. Also, make sure you're keeping all your receipts. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do a video all about your first year of taxes. Don't worry about that, but start thinking about it now. Keep your receipts, separate your money, stay on top of it, because when tax season comes around, don't be me sitting in front of your computer logging your expenses for like three days straight for 20 hours a day. It's not fun, and my accountant does not like me very much, I don't think. <laughs> I, what's her name? Number seven, buy some gear. Your clients will obviously have leashes, collars, hopefully some harnesses, but it's always good to have a backup. I have a couple different things in my car that hold pet supplies in my trunk. I have more leashes, different size harnesses of all kinds. I have 30 foot leads for any sort of outside playtime that we're gonna do if the dog can't be off leash and there isn't a fenced in area, or if I'm gonna take my dog Gemma who cannot be off leash no matter how much money I spend on her training. So I have my 30 foot leash so she can come with us on adventures. I highly recommend keeping that because you never know what your clients are gonna have. If you don't like retractable leashes, I'm really not a fan. It's good to have your own set of leashes, especially things that you feel comfortable with and that feel secure in your hands. I also keep an insane amount of poop bags in the car. And you know what, I'm gonna do another video all about all the supplies I have. I have to say that the thing that I use the most and that is the most helpful to me is this fanny pack that I got off of Amazon. It is so goofy walking around with this big old fanny pack, but the compartments on it are perfect. There's a spot in the top. It's a very shallow pocket originally for sunglasses, I'm pretty sure, but that's where I put treats because it drives me crazy to have a treat bag that I have to dig into, especially if the treats are little and they're like stuck in the folds and whatever. It's so nice, especially with reactive dogs or dogs where you need to get their attention really quickly. It's really nice to just be able to open that pocket and it's right there for you. I'm gonna put the link in the description. It is my favorite thing that I have. Advertising your business is a whole thing in itself. There are so many videos online on how to market and how to promote your business. I'm just gonna say that the most important thing, if you're gonna start with anything when you start your business, start with a Facebook page. Even if you don't have a website, start with a Facebook page. Because your business is so local, Having a Facebook page where there are local Facebook groups and a community of people, a network of friends and neighbors, it's a great place to get your name out there. Especially if you're posting pictures of clients' pets, they are likely to share them because who doesn't love when someone posts their dog on social media? So that is free advertising for you. Take advantage of that. Plug your name, your logo, your location, put your service radius in there. I personally have a really fun thing where my name is Devin, and there's also Devin England, and Devin's dog sitting tends to get a lot of people from England uh, inquiring about my services. So far, none of them have offered to fly me out there, although I would be very much willing to do that for them. So if you're watching this and you're from Devin England and you would like a dog sitter named Devin, I, I will get my passport ready. Number nine, this is a little bit of a bonus. You don't have to do it to start your business, but I had to put this in here because if you want to start off on the right foot with a successful business that stands out, get some certifications. Get your CPR certification, get a fear-free certification. If you join any networks like the National Association of Professional Pet Sitters, they have certification programs on their website. These things make you stand out. They show that you are serious, that you are constantly learning new things and continuing your education at all times on the best practices to handle people's 
fur babies. And it's really not that hard. The CPR class was a full day class. It was about nine or 10 hours. You can find someone in your area hosting these courses. For me, it was Canine Strong in Concord, New Hampshire. It was a all day class, went by super fast. It was hands on. I had taken the Red Cross first aid course online, which was great, but it was similar to reading a book where I understood all of it, but until you have it in your hands, it's it's different. So highly recommend going to one of those classes. It's similar to a human CPR certification where it expires every couple years and you retake the class, but it's so worth it, especially if you have employees I would definitely recommend that you have them go through the program as well. My last tip on how to start a successful pet care business is join the community of pet sitters in your area. There are enough pets to go around. I'm going to say it again. There are enough pets to go around. There's no reason to be competitive with each other. Use the people in your area as a network. Use them as a resource. Recommend clients go to them when you're not available and they'll do the same for you. It is give and take. It is not competition. You have to embrace that community because it will do so much for you. I'm looking into hiring right now and so I went out to coffee with a local pet care business owner and she gave me so much information, so many tips on how to get started with the hiring process. Mostly she just told me to do it, which was the advice I needed because I have been stalling. Having these people is an incredible resource. I promise it is life-changing to have a community that understands what you're going through that can help answer questions and support you when you need it and I am your biggest cheerleader please reach out to me if you have questions if you want to celebrate a success with me please tell me all about it I am so excited about this industry and how fast it's growing and how many passionate and dedicated people are starting new businesses every day if you can't find a local community of pet sitters maybe you're in a very rural town and you're the only one in the area, you can reach out to people on Facebook. There are so many Facebook groups that are full of people excited to give advice and pass on their knowledge. My favorite of all of them is Sitter Confessionals. It's a private Facebook group, so go on there. You can request to join. It is moderated by the people who run Pet Sitter Confessional, which is a podcast that I will definitely talk about many, many times. It has been one of the greatest resources that I have found, the podcast and that Facebook group. So I I think that's it for my 10 essential steps to starting a successful pet care company. If there's anything I missed or anything that surprised you, put it in the comments below. And if you watched this far, please put that little fox emoji in the comments, the one that kind of looks like my dog Gemma with the ears so I can see who's watching all the way to the end. And I love you dearly. Thank you very much. And I will see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Peace.